one of the things I like to ask people about are, are kind of their relations to the, the wider world. It sounds like you guys have made a transition in the last few years from, from a long history of operating in a certain way, but mm -hmm. shifting shifting in a way that, that doesn't sound like it's really a big shift for the experience students are having, but a shift in how you're labeling yourself or how you're, you're holding relationships <laughs> with kind of the world be, you know, outside. So it's interesting to me thinking about those bigger relationships. Are, are there things that, like, like, what what would you say are the contributors to that? Were there con was it just pandemic related, or was it uh, concerns about how the regulatory environment is, or what were what kind of and, and and is it a settled issue? Is it you know are there still concerns that might uh, bring more dynamics? So so tell yeah. me more about that. Yeah. So it was. There's multiple reasons why we transitioned. I think one, okay. the parent run component, um, I, I mean, I've been involved in the school for 25 years. And so the watching us go through the transition of from parent run, where they really ran the school, they were everything, we did all of it. Mm. And we, we okay. just had this ongoing, and we ran, um, like consensus was our process of democracy. And so okay. it was pretty incredible that the school still exists, to be honest, because <laughs> 25 adults that have other jobs and then they come together right. and they try to run a school. I mean, they were the bookkeepers, they were the cleaners, they were the fixers, they were the, you know, oversaw the staff, everything, everything that run, you need to make a school run, they did by volunteer, and then they had to make all the decisions by consensus. So it's pretty incredible that the wow. school has lasted. But one thing that came up, came up over and over and over is just parent burnout. By the time they mm. done with their nine years at the school, or if they, la if they lasted that long, they were wa worn out by the process. Mm. And because they had to run the school, their amount of you know time to be actually involved with the education and their students learning mm -hmm. was small so we uh, you know being somebody there that was kind of consistent through that process they we just kept looking for ways to be more efficient or should we be a director run school mm -hmm. and that there was a lot of resistance for a long time for that and mm -hmm. Over time, we, we switched from consensus to consent, which is, I don't know how much mm. you know of the two models, but it's they're similar. That was one big shift. Mm. And then we decided before the pandemic hit that like, maybe we should think about a director-run school and see what that mm. would be. Then mm. with, mm. with the onset of the pandemic, it put us into reflective mode even further and there were other small schools opening up near us that so that was competition and then also the state of maine passed the vaccination law that every student would have to be vaccinated and half of our families if we were a school would not be able to attend and we were like okay mm -hmm. we have competition we have this new law that isn't meeting our needs right. of our family and then homeschooling was getting larger and larger in the state of Maine. And right. so it kind of, like, oh, there was a wide variety of factors. And so we mm -hmm. tried to make the switch to a homeschool community. And interestingly enough, being mm -hmm. part of that process where we're director run now, and we're still mm -hmm. in the governance restructuring of like, how do we keep the essence uh, of what the consensus model was where everybody mm -hmm voice. I mean, that is something that's like the heart of our school is that each person here, no matter how old you are, has a voice that has value and needs to be heard and be part of what we do. And that's mm -hmm. that core value. When the school started in 1970, it was a free school. And then it shifted from right. that probably within five years of the history to a school that wasn't a free school, but it was still a holistic learning environment. And then it's had mm -hmm. many iterations. And so now it's like, 
Yeah, the governance structure for the adults in the system, it's we're trying to figure out how to bring the parent voice in, not in the way that it mm -hmm. was before, because we found that that was exhausting for them. And then, right. um, but, and then, so then the staff, like hierarchies happen naturally, but we have right now like circles of leadership and how do we share mm -hmm. decision making among them? Where do we have autonomy within our circles? And I would say our educators, we have a lot of autonomy to work with the students, to develop the curriculum that mm -hmm. we have, you know, the, our director kind of holds the space, but doesn't really have a lot of say of like, oh no, you can't do that. Or yes, you can, or whatever. We, we're pretty free, right. <laughs> you know, to like to do what we feel is best for the students that are in our school. This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world, where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.